This is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project and I have here a sort of a uh, answer to prayer that it was never spoken. Just this morning I was uh, gonna start editing a video and I uh, had the thought that I sure would like to have some plastic shelving for my workshop tent and then I decided you know what it's Saturday I'm gonna go garage sailing and enjoy a little bit of time and I went driving around the roads and these this is two entire sets of plastic shelving exactly what I wanted exactly what I was thinking that I'd like to have this morning in my workshop tent these were sitting on the side of the road for free <laughs> it's just like almost a prayer answer but I didn't even pray for it it was just there now how cool is that just sitting there for free waiting for the taken so these are going in the wood shop I'm gonna call it the wood shop tent because that's what it is right now and I'm gonna be able to take my tools and set them up permanently in the wood shop so uh, in the future moving forward wood shop tent is awkward to say so I will start calling it the wood shop and these are going to be set up in the wood shop to take my tools now how amazing I just thought about it and there they were free I do believe in God and more often something like this happens the more strongly I believe uh, not preaching just telling you my story now I spend the better part of today on the road um, garage selling wasn't actually um, successful this free roadside pickup was but what I did do is I got all the materials for the electric fence today um, I ordered uh, what I don't have yet will be in on Tuesday. I ordered um, all of the chicken wire. I canceled the previous order with Agway because I they couldn't get it in and it was uh, not available, as they said. And I ordered, um, found a better deal. I found a lot better deal. And I got more chicken wire for um, cheaper. Pretty amazing. I've got... Um, 150 foot rolls of six foot high chicken wire uh, coming in on Tuesday that I already paid for. I bought and paid for from the funds from the t-shirt sales so I want to thank you guys again and let me take you inside and show you all the equipment I got for the electric fencing. I got a case of step-in posts. These are not in the house. I put these here. Um, 50 posts uh, these are going to go in between the trees, so I will have the trees, the um, fencing sta stapled or nailed to the trees, and then the posts in between. So then I'll take you up inside and show you what I got. Okay, I have, it doesn't look like that much, but I bought all of the hardware for the electric fence. I got also a new electric fence controller because I talked to the experts at Tractor Supply and said that if that thing is not knocking you on your butt even with your shoes on then it's probably the capacitors or something and it is worn out so I got a fence controller and uh, then I've got a lightning arrester to protect a fence controller I've got hinges for three gates because I'm going to have an entry gate at the driveway and then two other gates to get in and out of the property. I've got the latches for the gates. I've got the electric fence, um, the, the grippers to take off from the fence post by the gate so you can open the gate. Then I've got some f electric fence wire tensioners. You turn it and it puts tension on the wire because with time they stretch. I've got the insulators for the gates. I've got insulators for, for the trees, because the trees are going to be my main supports for the electric fence. I've got pound-in tacks for the chicken wire. I've got three-quarter miles worth of electric fence wire, plus I've got roughly about a quarter mile left that I can harvest and reuse that I used around the um, perimeter of the yard last year of the meadow, which did keep the deer out as long as I had that on. So I've got um, about a mile of, of wire so this is all the hardware that I have inside right now so far again it doesn't look like that much but it sure does add up when you put it all together 
And then outside, I, d I showed you the fence posts, and I just went out and got the chicken wire. It came in as well, so I'll go show you that. And now I've got basically everything I need to put up the, uh, the perimeter fencing around the meadow and uh, have the electric fence. I'm going to have three strands of hot wire around the perimeter of the entire meadow. And I'm going to also run a ground wire, so I'll probably go back and get a little bit, little bit more wire. I'm going to run a ground wire all the way around as well, and every couple hundred feet or so I'm going to put another ground wire uh, rod in the earth. And that'll make this even more effective. Although this has a 10 mile range, it's probably not necessary, uh, but I'll consider that as an option anyway. We'll see how it works. So, I'll take you outside and show you the chicken wire. I got my solar electric fence controller sitting in the sun charging up. Um, probably be a few days before I'm ready for it, or weeks. Uh, it's going to be a huge task ahead of me. But I figured I'd leave it out here because it's sunny for the first time in days. And uh, they advise you to charge it up fully before using it anyway. So there it is. And let me take you over and show you the chicken wire that I got. Ten rolls of six foot long, 150 foot long chicken wire. I had to borrow my landlady's van, the one actually that I helped her pick up, the uh, extended van with a handicap access because that's some long big stuff and uh, well it's time to get working. So I'm plotting out, I have here in the woods, plotted out the distance of the uh, the fence I'm actually going to come out another 50 feet from here this is just where I ended up and left all the flags so it's going to come up to almost to the wood pile the barnwood pile um, just about it's going to come right along the edge of this meadow here or this um this raised flattened area this is the there's the RV okay and this is the area where I put all my um, pallet wood. So it's going to come out all the way up to the edge of the barnwood pile. Oh look, there's a deer. They live here actually. And sadly, they're covered in ticks. I have watched the animals out here and it's very very sad they're covered in flies and ticks and gnats and oh boy the poor things they have mega patience to just be able to exist like that I think actually for the deer winter must be a relief but they live up here they sleep here and um that's the two the other one is probably close by that's the babies that were raised here anyway this area is all going to be fenced in and in the entire meadow, so it's going to go across the meadow, cover all of this area, so the chickens will have all these leaves and brush and stuff to dig up. They're going to be in chicken heaven. And then it's going to go out beyond the house and out into the woods, about this, this far again, out into the woods on the other side of the, the tiny house on wheels. So that uh, the chickens will be able to eat any ticks and any critters before they get into my meadow which will be then a safe zone. So again I've staked it out, I've got the orange flags, if I can see it on the camera, all the way across and out beyond the tiny house and wheels out on the other side and past the tent. So now here comes the tricky part. This here, this used to be a road, an entryway up into the woods right here. So I've got the reason I say it might take one or two weeks to put up the fence, one, I'm alone, two, I've got to come across, the The driveway is going to be a gate, that's going to be a big project, then I've got to come across here, from, I'm going to go across these trees here, that one will be one of the main supports, and then I've got to drop all these little scrubby trees, because they need to come down anyway, and all the scrubby th brush in here, because this is going to be a driveway for my friend to go and access his camper, which is stored back there at the end of the woodpile. So he's going to be able to drive up outside the fence line 
and over to his his camper so this actually one tree right here this big thick one will be another main post of the fence so all this little scrubby stuff has to come out so he can drive through here and before I start working on the fence because I don't want to drop trees with the fence up and wreck all the pretty new fence that I'm putting up so this will probably be the first row that I start and then I don't know if you can see this is very uneven ground down up and then down and all around it's really uneven and that's going to be what's going to be tough to get the fence to conform to the ground properly to keep things from slipping under whether chickens or uh, raccoons or coyotes or whatever so I've got my work cut out for me clearing this all out but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go get my chaps on and my protective gear and start clearing out the brush first. I'm gonna just knock him out that way. And then all this, as I said, has to clear out for him to drive. And then, all these little scraggly things here have to come out for him to drive through here. And these two little guys and this big one will be a main support. And then down through here, all this gear is going to have to come out. All this little rough stuff. And then over here, um, there will be the corner post for my fence. The corner post here. Now right now we have a temporary creek running through here, but that's because of massive flooding from extreme heavy rains we've had recently. Then, for his driveway, he'll be able to turn around here, so I have to log this out and get this out of the way move a couple rocks that's gonna be a beast we'll probably use his truck for that and then he's probably gonna come around I'm just plotting out his driveway I am NOT taking down that big tree so he'll probably drive around I'll probably have to knock out I'm gonna to want to keep that as a fence I'm gonna to have to see I think he can drive through here and do a weavy weaving pattern around these bigger trees this was absolutely flooded here just yesterday but it's been raining for days and uh, this was actually completely flooded and just a rushing mass of water going through yeah so then over here you see I've got a lot of brush to clear out see there's his camper over here and I've got to clear out all this little uh, these scraggly trees spindly trees for him to drive through to get up there and then I'm thinking what it looks like right now is the main um, the main fence is gonna go from this big tree here to this big tree and stay up more on the high hillside so it'll probably go to that major tree yeah it won't come in this far so it's gonna stay up there a little higher actually and just swing from tree to tree to tree that way so I'm plotting it out as I go and then it'll run through the woods this way and that keeps it on higher ground too so I won't ever have any shorting out in the water when it rains extensively like it likes to do here oh yeah there's a lot of little stuff to cut and clear out and they're they're spindly but they're really tall so it's gonna be quite a task um, I just gotta do it so it's going to be a, a lot of brush clearing, a lot, because the line will go out through here, all the way back, and it'll be good, it'll be a relief to see once I have a line of sight, and then come around behind the uh, workshop camper, and then around into the woods that way. Now behind the workshop camper is a lot of uh, blueberry bushes and low shrubs, so that's going to be a lot of uh, pulling and hacking to get that out. So I think to so I don't kill myself I'm gonna I'm gonna um, do one section at a time look at that deer just sitting there the whole time I'm walking past her and she ignores me just ignoring me happy as anything I don't know where the other one is but they made it through the winter brother and sister there's brother and sister um, let me see let me see um, is that Hey you, psst, psst. hey, look at me, ignoring me, I can't tell, 
moving so much. I can't tell if that's brother or sister, but there is a brother and sister pair. Hello. I think that's the girl. Where is she? I'm only 15, 20 feet away. Is it still long enough, hey? Is it? No, wait. I think I might see nubs on it. I can't tell. It might be a guy. There's nubs on the head of the guy. It's in the shade, so it's hard to tell. And because of all the bugs, it's moving its head up and down, up and down, up and down. But actually, I'm surrounded by bugs. They're not biting, so I don't have my head net on. But I, uh, I do use a head net when I need it. Right now, there's no biting bugs. They're just sort of, I don't know if you can see them. They're swarming in front of me. Can we see them? Yeah, I think you can. So, I'll uh, get clothed up and get to it. Start an electric fence. Oh, been busy. Driveway's blocked. Now, the, the fence is going to come across. There's going to be a gate across the driveway, and then it's going to attach to these trees here, up to these three, and then I've, I've cleared out all this path here. All the trees I'm laying off neatly off to the side. It's going to connect to this tree. Here's the driveway for my friend to get up in here to his camper. All right, here's this tree is going to be used. And then I started staking out the trees because it was getting a little bit hard to follow what I'm doing here. Uh, cleared out, clearing out the path for him to drive through. And then I'm clearing out the trees around the trees that I'm going to use so that there's a, uh, a clear path to work and nothing as people had warned me for raccoons to jump from tree to tree which would not be beneficial for me at all so you can see the orange flags marking out each tree that I'm going to use on the uh, along the path here another somewhere out there is another so there it is I've got it all marked out out to, um, it's going to curve around here, stay around the high side here, and then it's going to follow along, I don't know if you can see all the orange markers, there's my deer friend, by the way the deer is not afraid of the chainsaw, at all, not at all afraid, now I can see that's a girl, okay that's a girl, the, the guy has some nubs on his head, so um, there's the flags out there and that's where I ended up right there so far now I've got to clear all the trees around both sides here so that the raccoons can't jump climb the trees and jump over and come on down the other side avoiding the fence and everything so I uh, got to tank up the good old home light chainsaw and continue on and then I'll uh, clear out the brush as I go lay it all in piles and then um, take care of that later but yeah it's a job oh boy it's a big job here but well, it's got to be done I got some packages here today Let's see what we got this is from YKS Tech Ramona, uh, what is it? Chino, California. RKS Tech. Ah! I ordered this off eBay because the ones that I had ordered never uh, ended up showing up. Ordering from China is such a danger. I've got the Uno. Oops, where's the camera lens? I've got the little Uno. This is the um, Arduino. Arduino Uno. With. Uh, USB cable. Boy, I'm trying to look at the camera upside down and sideways. And the um, board with some uh, jumper wires. And I've got this uh, big one here. Let's see what we have. 
Ah, yes. Something else I ordered. This is, um, there's a place called Sportsman's Guide that I shop on. And uh, this is Guide Gear. It's probably their own brand. And it's a ripstop plaid shirt that was a uh, really good price. And I got it for my outings and outdoor work and tactical channel. So you'll be seeing me wearing that pretty soon. An actual uh, ripstop.